Welcome to the Solid Cam University channel. This video's topic is defining a turning insert using a 3D model. So in the toolkit, you have the option to define your various tool components using either the parameter data, sketch data, or in this case, 3D models. So here in this video, we're gonna use a 3D model to define a insert. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be a custom insert, although, uh, it is best to be done this way uh, because standard inserts could easily be defined using the default parameter data. It's actually a lot easier to use that. Uh, but for whatever reason, if you need to define your insert using a 3D model, like I have here, then we could get the model from our tooling supplier, like I've done with this entire assembly. We've got our insert, and then we have the other components that make up the overall tool assembly. In this case, it is the clamp. It's the actual shank itself. All these items can be included in your tool component definition for the shank. And then uh, for the insert, we'll just use this individual solid that represents the insert. But uh, what makes this uh, an actual process to be covered in the video is the steps that we get to make that solid we're gonna use for the definition. And all it is is taking this and translating this into an STL. So let's take a look at how we did that. To prepare the solids for STL creation, we need a corner system that we're gonna output the STL under. So for the shank, I've actually created this corner system here. You can see that I have the X axis pointing perpendicular to this face. I have the Z axis essentially perpendicular to this face, and then the Y axis perpendicular to that last face. Uh, and that is because when I mount this into my toolkit, I actually want it to be in this X, Z plane. The XZ plane being the turning plane, the cutting plane on, on my lathe or my mill turn. Uh, so essentially, I want that to be mounted like that so that when I go to use this in an operation, it's already in the XZ plane. So that is the mounting of the shank. And when we output all those components as the shank solid, I'll be using that coordinate system. But this shank is also going to be holding that insert. So I've actually also defined a joint. If we take a look at how I defined the joint, I've actually defined it as having the origin on the top face of the insert with the Z axis pointing essentially in that direction and the X axis pointing in that direction. Again, establishing the XZ plane, the cutting plane on this tool. Uh, but I specifically have the X pointing in that direction because I want that to actually point at my cutting point. So if you take a look at how I actually did the sketch, created a convert entities of the edges of the insert so I can get this point right here. I'm gonna use this as not necessarily my cutting point, that's something you can define when you get into the tool assembly, but I do wanna get some sort of reference point that represents the cutting point because I want my x-axis to be collinear with that cutting point. So if we take a look at my joint, in the joint I have the x positive collinear or coincident with that cutting point, but I have the x positive going away from the cutting point. And then in terms of Z, I want that to be in the same Z plane. So essentially, when you set up this corner system, as you can see here, I've made these two lines here, find the center of the, uh, of, of, of the, the top face of the insert. So this is essentially just the center of the, uh, of the mounting uh, hole. Uh, now, for this insert, it actually was easy enough because in that insert, it actually did already have the origin there and I just projected it to this tool plane. If not, you would also find the center of that hole, establish the origin, and then draw those lines. But using those lines, I've created my X, I've created my, my Y and my Z. I will output this as a joint coordinate system. And then finally, for the insert, if I just hide my joint coordinate system and bring up my insert mounting, I'm actually using the same origin because I would continue to use that face as my cutting point. But for the mounting of the insert, it's a little different. I need the X to still point in that direction, being coincident with my cutting point, but I'd like my X and Y to be oriented like this. I want my Y to be in this direction, and I want my Z to be in this direction. And if we can kind of zoom in here, Maybe I can do it like this so we can see it a little bit better. So the X is collinear with the cutting point. The Y is in that same Z, uh, that, uh, that same top face plane. And then the Z is actually perpendicular to the top face. If I zoom back in here, you can see the Z is perpendicular to that top face. 
Again, this is how you're going to define the insert mount because of the way that this gets translated into the assembly file, into the uh, tool assembly kit, um, it will uh, mount that correctly. So in this case, you're using the same origin for the insert mount and the joint, but they have different directions. Okay, so again, you can just take a look at that there. The Z in this case is perpendicular to this top face and the X is still collinear. Whereas in the joint, if I just hide and show these once again, the X is collinear with a cutting point, but the Z is coplanar. It's the top face plane. So those definitions there will allow us to output these various solids for use in the definition. So to output them, we'll go to File, Save As, and then whatever solid we have on screen, we're going to output under as an STL. So let's start with the shank. So I'm just going to hide my insert so that the only solids on screen I want to output as my shank assembly. In this case, uh, the clamp, the spacer, and all that. We'll go to File, Save As, change this to STL format. And I'm going to make sure that we output it correctly. So if I go into the set, uh, to the options, I'll make sure that I'm outputting in the same units that I was working in. So in this case, if I look in the bottom right corner, I'm working in inches. I'll output my STL in inches. As a shank, I'm not really concerned with the overall quality of the simulation. So I'll just have it as a coarse resolution. That should save some of the calculation time in my simulations. Um, this is a third-party format that I translated into a SOLIDWORKS file. This was originally a STEP file. So in that translation, there might be some positive space that I don't want to include in my STL. I'll check this box here. And also, we're looking at uh, collapsing all these solids into one file. So I'm just going to check this box here to save all components as a single file. To output the shank for later mounting, I want to make sure I output it under a corner system that is one that I defined and gives me those, those orientations I'm gonna later use. So in this case, I'm just gonna de define it as being under shank mounting. If I click okay, I'll just give it this name here and I'll just save it to my location there. So now I have an STL that I'm gonna use to define my shank later on. Now let's save the insert. So I'm just gonna hide these guys. I'll bring the insert on screen. So now the only solid I have on screen is what I'm going to output as my STL. I'll go to File, Save As, and I'll save this under its own name. Save it as an STL. And again, I'll just do the same thing. So I'll take a look at my settings. I'm working in inches, so I'll leave it as outputting in inches. This is the actual cutting component, so I want to make sure I have fine resolution here. For my simulations, I can see the surface quality of my finish. And I'll leave these two boxes checked. Even though that this is not an assembly, it's just part of my default settings now. So I'll just leave those boxes checked. And I'm going to output this insert under its own mounting, the insert mount that I defined previously. So click OK. I'm saving it under that name. Click Save. The joint, we're not using it in this definition screen. We're going to use it in the actual assembly screen when we uh, define the shank. So let's go to Tools, Solid Cam, Toolkit. Now you would go to New Tool Library and Tool Components. I already have a library that I'm going to add these to, so I'm just going to go to Edit Tool Library, and I'll go to Tool Components, and I'm going to go to the library that I created for this video. We'll start by adding our shank. So I'll go to Shank Components, and I'm just going to add the square shank to shanks. I can rename this to whatever I like, so I'll just call this Tool holder, DSB, and R. And then in those parameters, I mentioned earlier we have parameter data, sketch, and 3D model. I'm looking to use 3D model, so I'll just click on that. I'll make sure that the units I'm using is inch once again, and just browse to that solid. Now, SolidCam defaults to my tool libraries uh, uh, folder. I did not save my STL to that library folder. I saved it to the actual folder I have running for this uh, this video. So I'm actually just going to grab those two STLs, control C as in Charlie on my keyboard, come over here and paste. So I'm basically just copying and pasting. And now I just want to grab that STL that I have there, and we'll just use that one today. So just by grabbing that, you can see that it now is being mounted under that coordinate system I defined up there. You can see the solids were all brought in. 
And the joint, the joint is out in space because the joint, if we take a look at our connection section, was brought over from that default shank that I just added there. But I'm going to correct this with the file open in the background. I'm going to be able to access those other coordinate systems I created. In this case, the joint that I defined. So I go to joint one, coordinate system. I can calculate relation between coordinate systems. And this brings up the solid cam utilities that has been mentioned in previous videos and webinars. Um, this is now internal to the tool component library. I can now go here and say the master coordinate system was the shank mounting, this guy over here. And I'd like to define my joint coordinates based off of another coordinate system from that file. In this case, the one that I defined as joint. If I just apply it, you can see now that it's been applied there. I'll just click OK. And now this shank is fully defined. If I bring in an insert, you'll see it'll come in at that angle. It is in the X Z plane allowing me to do the, uh, the insert definition there once I bring it in. So that's done. Now let's go and do our insert. In this case, that insert that I defined is a type of profile insert. So I'll bring it over to cutters. Again, let's rename this guy. So I just right click, rename, and we'll just give it a name. Shape type, I'll change it to 3D model. I'm in inches, I'll just browse. And again, I'll just browse to the one that I just created. And it comes in defined the same way. And if you recall, when we defined the insert mount corner system, it did not have the same orientation here. So the way that I did it in the insert mount, if we take a look at those side by side, the Z is perpendicular to this face, the X is collinear, coincident with the cutting point, and then the Y is in that same plane. That translates in the tool kit like this. So this is how we want it to be mounted on the shank. The X is still collinear with the cutting point, that's over there, but in this case, the Z is now that cutting face there. This definition here is required because this is a turning insert, and I definitely want this plane right here to be the X Z plane. So now those two components are defined. I'm gonna exit out of there, now I'll go and assemble them in the tool assembly. So tools, solid cam, toolkit, edit tool library, and I'll go to tool assemblies. Again, I've already created a library for this video. So I'm just gonna use that, that library. We'll jump to insert from tool components library, go to my library I just created. Now I'll just drag and drop everything into this window. And because the way I define everything, they should all lock into place. If we zoom in on that insert, you can see the cutting point is at the tip of the insert. It's mounted as I wanted it to be mounted. Everything is in line. The only thing left to do in this assembly is if I notice that the insert is not defined correctly, that cutting point, in the tool assemblies library, I can click on this plus sign and we can just correct that cutting point. So rather than being at that point on the radius, I'll just click on origin position, and click on the icon that moves it to the corner that I want. I want it to actually be in that corner there of the insert. So now I can use this tool in my turning operations. And if it's mounted not in X but in Z, well, that is just going to be controlled by the mounting of the holder itself. So in this assembly, I can go to the holder, I can click on the connections, and I can modify these around, let's say, the y-axis. I can rotate around the y-axis to get this to be not just mounted in X, but I can get it to be mounted in the Z of my machine as well, or at a 45 degree angle, or whatever angle you need it to be at. Once you've assembled it, it is now a tool that you can use in your tool path. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com, and stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.